Hi, my name's John Stringer and I'm a business performance coach, specialising in taking businesses from ordinary to extraordinary. You can hear more of what I have to say on Prosper's TV channel. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you none other than Sir John Stringer, the business coach. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Prosper yourself? Fantastic. Thank you so much for um, you know, allowing us the opportunity to have you on the show today. Now, viewers, if you're watching this part of the episode, I am assuming you're a business owner that's really on your journey to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, running a business shouldn't be hard. So why should you struggle? Now, John has had over 30 years of experience um, in business performance, mentoring, and he has helped many businesses through his business coaching practice. Now, he's helped businesses to succeed in their growth and their strategy and in overall improved business performance. Now, you might be sitting there and going through a lot of stress within your business, or you might not have the accountability that's actually needed um, you know, for you to be doing, have that business that you started um, and now it's, it's become a burden. That's the reason why we've brought John here so he can unload in the next 30 minutes his 30 years of experience in business performance mentoring. Now, John, I could go on and on and uh, talk about your accolades and all the people that are raving about your work. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started uh, um, as a business performance um, coach. Um, I, look, I really started when I was working in corporate um, and I would work with corporates that had issues with how their businesses were performing. And pretty much it was go in, pull, pull the part that was uh, at fault apart, look for the problems within it, um, fix those problems, reassemble it, but reassemble it in a way where it worked really, really well. And then obviously things flow from, from the system working properly. And then once it was doing that, um, it was time for me to go and look for the, for the next sick puppy to, to help along. So yeah, I've spent most of my life helping people uh, fix businesses that aren't performing the way that they should to a way that's really, really um, powerful and profitable for that business so that they can, they can go on to achieve whatever they, they want to achieve with the business unit. Absolutely. Now, you would have also noticed, uh, John, in the 30 years that no business is the same or no finger on the same hand is the same height. What are the main um, you know, problems that people come to you, especially with John? Look, ostensibly, um, business follows a model. The, the, where the business differs, I mean, a business transaction is a business transaction, but it's the context in which that business operates. So look, for example, you could have uh, five people that had retail hat shops, um, but they're in different areas. They've got different clientele. They operate you know, different geographics. They may have an online business. So it's the context in which they operate that is what makes the difference. So selling a hat is selling a hat, but it's, it's how the hat sold. It's, it's, it's the whole process that, that that business has about whether they're conducting the business properly, whether it's profitable, whether it's not profitable, whether they have stock lines that are sucking the profit out of um, other really strong prof, uh, product lines. It's, it's actually understanding that, that context, and that's something that I pride myself on, is that no matter the business, I can inject myself into the context in which that business is operating to get at the heart of the matter. I, can, I look at it from the client's perspective, not from my own. I'm looking at how they see their world and taking that 30,000 foot view of it. Absolutely. Now, I mean, obviously you're talking about context here and um, it is also really crucial for a business person to be absolutely clear about the trajectory that they're going to be taking on. Um, obviously, I don't know if you've read the book, uh, The E-Myth. Yes, I have. Absolutely. Where they talk about the different personalities that are um, okay within a business and being a business owner is very challenging. You know, when somebody would have started their business, their role, 
quickly changes. Now, what sort of, um, you know, stresses have you noticed um, people having in business um, that have come to you that you've managed to solve? I think the biggest one, Prosper, is where people try to be all things to all people in business um, when they have a particular skill set. That's what they should focus on. And then the, the skill sets that they're not good at or that you know they don't really want to do, that's when they should um, engage external people or someone else with a particular skill set to help them. Uh, you know, I've heard it said that the most successful people in business surround them with other people to help them be successful who of themselves have been successful in the area and they operate. Because, you know, a person who's, say, uh, really, really good at a particular skill may be terrible at, at fundamental administration and paperwork. And, and they can cause more harm at trying to do that and not doing it properly um, as they could by paying a few dollars to have someone else help them with that while they focus on their core strength. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, like you say, help, having other people help you out on the things that, um, you know, you, you are not really capable of doing. Now, I've also noticed um, a lot of entrepreneurs there, John, have subscribed to the latest fads of entrepreneurism where 50 hours and above is a badge of honor. And now they can't keep up um, with the balance of running a business, um, a family and a social life all together. Does doing long hours um, actually constitute that you, you're doing well or that things are, are in order from your experience? Look, I think that falls into two camps, Prosper. Um, if you see it as a badge of honour that you've got to do 50, 60 or 70 hours a week, you need to have a hard look at yourself because apart from the odd occasion when you really might need to dig in and do something, if you're spending that much time at work and you don't have time for family, you don't have time for friends, in fact, you don't have time for yourself, something is going to come undone and unravel fairly quickly at some point in the near future. It's, it's actually, a, I think, a mistake to, to be putting in those sorts of hours and not having any respite at all from, from that sort of intensity. Understandable. So maybe somebody decides not to go through that route and then they go into hiring, per se, and, um, you know, everything is going on smooth and now they get into a productivity rut, you know, uh, when in, in employees um, have stopped producing and they've stopped becoming uh, happy with the work that they're doing. How have you helped um, or how can you help or what can you encourage um, people to create that culture or the business culture within, within their business to um, alleviate um, employee productivity um, rates. Look, I, I, I had a client who had that very issue that you describe, and what it came down to was that because they were putting in such long hours, they didn't actually have time to stop and smell the, smell the roses, as it were, and just get time to think or consult with somebody externally. Because at the end of the day, um, you, Taking on employees is not necessarily the answer. You know, if you're scaling, starting to scale your business up, one of the things you want to be aware of is that you may only need help from time to time, and you can maybe you can source that externally if that's a possibility, because then you can turn that on and off as you need it, uh, because productivity can be an absolute killer. Uh, it, it, it hits profitability really quickly if you've got staff that are dragging the chain. Absolutely. Now, profitability is what everybody else um, aspires for because we are in this business, um, you know, to, to leave, learn and contribute and also to make sure that the businesses are profitable and also enjoyable. Now, for you to be profitable, there has to be some sort of cash flow. And cash flow is like oxygen to a business. Now, a lot of people, um, you know, don't fi find the, the, the right uh, rhythm along that. And maybe, you know, the, the, the cash flow is poor or is erratic. Um, how do you get this um, fundamental of business success right? 
Right, there's, there's two ways to tackle that. Uh, I think every business that starts off should start off with some fundamental form of a business plan. Uh, you, if Before you kick the f first goal, you've got to know what, how, much, how much you need to earn in order to pay for your business expenses and to pay yourself an okay wage. Now, if you can't get to that point with you know, the time of starting, then you need to have a very hard look at what, whether you're going into the business for the right reasons. There's plenty of people who go, I really want to be my own boss and everything will be different when, I'm, when I've got my own business. That's when the hard work really starts. You, you've got to decide who is your market, where is your market, what does your ideal client look like, what do you expect to be able to offer that client? What are you going to get in return for all that work that you're putting in? You really need to have some idea because depending on the nature of the business and what your terms of business are, that is going to dictate cash flow. If you give people too long for, to pay their account, then you're carrying that cost. And unless you've got good cash reserves, it won't take long if, you know, if you're pushing out the credit line too far you'll struggle to pay your bills. And what I see with people with cash flow issues is that their, their rate of spending is greater than their rate of income. And then it just comes to that point where there is no more. You, you run dry and you have to wait until the cash coming in catches up. So it's about understanding what you need to have happen before you start in order to be able to monitor and manage how your business is running. Absolutely. Now, John, I know you're absolutely passionate, um, you know, about business performance and just from all the small pain points that I've just, um, you know, illustrated previously, you know, you do have solutions and answers to that and you can help um, whoever's watching this show right now through all of this in, um, in the smart way. Now, you do have an eight step process that you take uh, people through. Can you just give us an overview of what that entails and um, you know how it actually then helps people uh, to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? All right. So in my eight-step process, it actually starts with a conversation with the person, so uh, with the business owner. So at the end of the day, the business owner and I need to want to or need to respect each other enough that we want to work together. And then from that, the next step is to look at the person's core skills. Because as I said before, we want to know what you're really good at and what you're weak at. And then it's the weakness uh, aspects that we want to either farm out or find a way to improve them so that they become strengths. And then from there, we move into looking at the people that you have either working for you or working in conjunction with you in terms of your business and understanding what their strengths are, what they're good at, what they're not good at, so that at the end of the day, the mix is a whole mix, not just a part mix. Um, that's really important. Then from there, we look at what, what inner voice. You've got a little voice that sits on your shoulder and tells you you should be doing this, you should be doing that, should listen to this. We, we need to know what that inner voice is telling you, what is actually true and what is not real because the, the not real stuff and the stuff that you tell yourself can also undo your strengths. And then from, from that point, then we go and look at what your business is currently doing. So we have a deep dive into the financials. We look at how you're operating, whether you're making money, whether you're losing money, whether you're actually tracking your numbers or not. And if you're not, then we need to show you what is happening and what you need to do in order to improve that. And that's what we do from our deep dive. And so from that deep dive, we, we then develop a blueprint that lays out what it takes for you to be successful in your business. Then it's a case of you going and, and trying the things that have been recommended with the support and accountability that, that my business offers. And that is I work with people. I don't do it for them. I work alongside them. I walk with them. I'm looking to grow them and make sure they understand what they need to do in order to resolve things. When they hit a, a, a pothole in the road or they hit a brick wall, they have to have someone they can turn to. And that I'm that person that is there to talk them through an issue get them to understand what they're trying to do. And rather than tell them what to do, help them find the solution themselves by asking them the right questions. 
then when they've done that and they've they then are able to manage their business if you don't like your business numbers you only need to i will make sure that you only are looking at two or three numbers that are absolutely vital for you to understand week in and week out and as long as you know what those numbers are and you hit them then we know that your business ultimately will be successful because they're the markers that take you towards success. And then once that's once you've achieved that, then we're at the ninth step, which says, well, you now know how this works. All we have to do is rinse and repeat everything you've now learned. In other words, it's not like, well, yeah, this is all over, now go and do it yourself. You actually need to you know, constantly revisit, renew, and that, at that point, my engagement normally steps out to once a quarter. People then come back once a quarter, they report in, we go through their business numbers a bit like a board report. And so they understand the need for accountability, taking action, getting a result, if it's not the right result, finding a solution and putting that in place so they address the problem. You know, in the old days, Prosper, you would run in business for a year, then you'd give all your numbers to your accountant at the end of the year, and then maybe three or four months later, he'd come back and say, hey, Prosper, you've had a shocking business year. Now, this is something like, you know, six months after a year's gone. So this is 18 months down the track. You're being told, hey, you didn't do so well, you need to do this. That's way too long. I mean, with technology today, business has the opportunity to measure and know how they're performing literally on a 24-7, 365 basis. You know, there's, there's products, there's software out there that can actually make life an awful lot easier if you're using the right technology. Absolutely. So thank you so much for that elaborate, um, you know, uh, explanation of what your steps include and what they are all about. Now, John, we might actually be having, um, you know, somebody sitting in the, in the, in the audience right now watching this video and they are arming and ahhing and saying, I really need to um, get my head around all of this and business has been hard and they have been struggling. Um, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you there? Uh, best just to email me. So just if you uh, email me, john at johnstringer.com.au, um, give me some contact details, tell me what your problem is. I'm more than happy to have a 20-minute conversation with you to find out where you're at and you know whether there's something that we can actually help you with or whether that's actually not the right fit at the moment and you should be doing something else. And that's Absolutely. completely that's completely free of charge. I'll, I'll do those 20 minute um, triage calls simply to understand where you're at. And even at the end of the 20 minute call, I'll give you something you can take away and apply, uh, even if, if we're not going to work together. Absolutely. I know we've gotten so much value from you um, in this episode. And obviously now we understand that running a business shouldn't be hard. And you know, why should people actually struggle? Now, Obviously, you might have somebody who's just really not yet quite convinced and um, just thinking, oh, you know, maybe I've been doing it well. I, I, I can handle my stress. I can handle my employee problems. Um, you know, I can handle my cash flow deficit and I can handle all the, you know, lack of balance that I have within my business. What's like your go-to advice that you give to somebody who thinks, you know, they, they might not need an accountability person or somebody that can actually, um, you know, help them be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Uh, my message is stop fooling yourself. You really are fooling yourself if you think you can do it all on your own. Even, look, even the most successful people on this planet, Richard Branson, for example, he still has his, a business mentor, someone that he goes to, someone that he bounces ideas off before he goes and does it. So someone as successful as Sir Richard Branson, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you and I, Prosper, to have someone that we can talk to, that we can go to, that sits outside of the business, that has a completely different view of how the, you know, what the business is producing. So my advice is that, you know, sure you've, you need to pick the right person. There are plenty of business coaches and mentors out there that just tell you what to do without understanding what your business is about and what your struggles truly are and what type of person you are in order to help you uh, find the right pathway 
to fix and adjust what needs fixing and adjusting. I don't think there's one business that I've been involved with that I haven't improved the result by two or three times what they've paid me to, to, to work on it. Absolutely. Now, John, I cannot thank you enough for the time that you spend with us on the show today. That has been 30 years of experience that you've just compressed into this um, episode here. So I really, really appreciate the value that you've brought to us today. Uh, you're welcome, Prosper. Absolutely. Now, if you've been watching this show, you've noticed that um, John knows a thing or two about what he's talking about. I mean, that has been 30 years experience in business performance men mentoring. And John, as you can tell, has helped many businesses through um, his business coaching. And like he says, um, you know, if people like Richard Branson and all the other you know, heavy heaters in the entrepreneurial game are looking for mentors and coaches. Why not you? Who, what, what makes you think you can go at it um, alone? Now, as uh, the topic suggested, running a business shouldn't be hard. So why do you struggle? Subscribe to this channel so you can get more of this um, exciting information that you can get from experts like John. Jen, thank you so much again. Yeah, welcome, Prosper. Bye for now. Thank you.